A weekly meeting is necessary for all scout units. Unfortunately, nobody joined just to go to meetings. Hey, Scout Stan. Let's talk a little bit about mentoring the senior patrol leader that runs your meetings. But before we get into that, I want to talk about our live meeting. Here on the channel, we have a live meeting. It's usually on the very first Sunday of each month. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That's so that throughout the United States, all the different time zones, they can tune in and it's a live show. You can type in your questions and I will be there to answer them. Um, definitely do that. It's a wonderful way to get engaged with all of the things going on on this channel. I also want to thank all the Patreon members uh, for financially supporting. They get to see the videos before you do. And then, of course, we have our members on the channel who also get to see exclusive videos. They have their own uh, icons and, and all the different things they can do. It's just amazing. Okay, So if you're interested in helping out this channel, please join it in. Look into it. Look into it. See what matches up with what you can help out on. And uh, I appreciate everyone that helps. Now one of the big things about um, senior patrol leaders is that they are in charge of their youth meeting. Not the scoutmaster, not the assistant scoutmaster. They're there to mentor and coach their leadership, whether it be senior patrol leader, the assistant senior patrol leader, all of the different departments. They're there to mentor and help them succeed in helping the unit grow and do great things. That's the wonderful thing about it. The youth are in charge. Now, a lot of adult leaders have to work hard with their senior patrol leaders to understand they can't drop the ball. They are in charge. They are the ones that need to do the work. They are the ones that need to do all of that planning stuff. And the only time that the adult leaders will jump in interrupt, stop, is safety. That's the one thing that they're in charge of. They are in charge of safety of the unit. If there's something happening or something going to happen, they will be involved. They, the adult leadership will definitely jump right in. Um, so other than that, they allow the scouts to follow that youth leader. That's all a part of learning leadership. Now we both know <laughs> that we've been in meetings where the youth leadership have failed. I mean it is falling apart. Um, that's happened. Um, that is normal in scouting. It may from the outside look a little chaotic but it is normal. Scouting is a safe place to fail. We shouldn't set them up but we need to let nature take its course. If you don't plan your meeting, you're planning to fail. That's what a lot of these youth don't understand until it happens, until they are the ones that everybody in the room is looking at. It makes a point. Now the leadership, the adult leadership, the scout master, scout masters, assistants, uh, they are in charge of the training of the youth. Uh, there is a, uh, I have a video, it's right up there. It is on the introduction to leadership skills in a troop video. And scout masters, um, you need to individually work with, in teams, you know, the buddy system, the 2 deep leadership, but individually you need to work with them towards their leadership goals. That is one of the things that comes up in that training. When you're doing the whole group and you're, you got all of the, the job description for each one of the scouts, you need to, the, the 
scoutmaster needs to work with the senior patrol leader. They need to be there as a coach. They need to be there as a mentor. They need to remind them of things. They need to set goals with them and say, hey, we need to set a goal towards so many meeting plans and things like that. So that's one of those things that's kind of covered in that, that training. Now, believe it or not, a lot of youth think they can just wing it or do what the last SPL did. That's not good. It doesn't achieve their goals of learning leadership. Now, one of their big goals should be to actually come up with a meeting plan. Uh, there's specific paperwork to do that. As a scoutmaster or a scoutmaster's assistant, the thing that you need to do is work with the youth to develop that, that plan of the meeting. And that plan should relate to what you have scheduled. If you're getting ready to go to go canoeing, you need to have a lot of the stuff in the meetings that's focused or towards the goal, the overriding goal, of going canoeing. <laughs> that's, it's important. It would be counterproductive if you're going to talk about snowshoeing and you live in the south, okay? <laughs> Unless you are going to Northern Tier for their winter experience. So, you know, you got to make it all match up. And the youth need to understand that the meetings are important. Um, you know, a great deal of people have joined scouting, not for the meetings, but I know a lot of scouts have left because the meetings were boring, okay? Uh, they were off topic and they didn't know what was going on. Um, that's, that's not good. The youth need to make sure that the, the meeting is planned out. Now, below this video where it says more, you can click on that. There's all kinds of links. Down in there is a PDF of a meeting plan. Feel free to download that and use that. Your senior patrol leader should have copies of this all the time. You should keep one in your folder when you go to the meetings so that they come to the meeting, they don't have a pen, you hand them a pen. They don't have the form, you hand them the form. You know, you got a mentor sometimes, and uh, that is one of those things. Uh, definitely download that form. And one of the big important things is that the scoutmaster needs to meet with the senior patrol leader uh, before the meeting. Um, that's typically done, you know, the, the parents come in and, and the senior patrol leader sits down with the scoutmaster and uh, the assistant scoutmaster's too deep leadership that's fully trained and ready to go. And uh, once that's there, they need to sit and talk about what's going to be covered in the meeting and what they have planned. Now, a lot of youth think that when you say you got to plan the meeting, that says you got to do everything at the meeting. No, that's not true. And you need to make sure that they're clear on that. They need to delegate. They need to talk to the older scouts that have experience to present. That's critical. You want to make sure they delegate. They don't get overwhelmed. Very important. Now, after the meeting, it's just as important to meet with the senior patrol leader to briefly talk about the good things and bad things that happened at the meeting, what they should have done, what they could have done. You know, those are things that you can bring up. You want them to do the talking. You want to listen to what their input is. Um, you could have your two cents, you know. <laughs> Definitely talk with the um, senior patrol leader that you are mentoring, okay? That is critical. Um, definitely talk with them. Get the uh, information. Write it down. You know, make sure that they are committing to those goals that they set early on and that they are literally delegating those responsibilities, those goals to others so that, so that he can, he, the scout, he, she, could actually get 
the experience. That's critical. Getting that experience is everything of leading a meeting. Now, as an adult leader, you need to understand this is a youth meeting. That's their meeting, not yours, their meeting. You're often invited to come in at the very end and do a Scoutmaster's Minute or Scoutmaster's Moment, uh, but short and sweet, and that's it. That is the key. You want to mentor the people that run the meeting, which are the senior patrol leader. They're the ones that are in charge. They're the ones that have the plan, and they're the ones that run it. And keep this in mind. I've been at meetings where the scoutmaster dismissed everybody. That's not what a, what a scoutmaster does. They come in, they do their bit, and they hand it back over to the leader, who is the senior patrol leader, the youth. That's the key. Once that's done, then they can dismiss their meeting. It's a mindset. You need to keep that in mind as a leader, that this is a youth-led organization. Okay, Troops are led by the youth. The youth need to be in charge. Now, you are the mentor. You are the facilitator. You are the coach. That's true, but you need to work with the senior patrol leader. Now, there are extremely rare times when the senior patrol leader position is not working out for that youth. It's important. We need to change that up. Now, in a lot of troops, they have bylaws. Those bylaws need to be very clear of how the unit leader and the committee chair change out an elected position like a senior patrol leader. And it happens. There are senior patrol leaders that go off to college. There are senior patrol leaders that leave the, the community. There's, there's reasons. So there should be something in place to have them um, not falter the whole unit because they're not there. Um, that's, that's true. There might be something as far as discipline. They have issues uh, that they don't want to listen or get mentored or told or any of that stuff is what they say. That might be a personality problem. So that's true. Uh, a lot of senior patrol leaders are actually the youth of the scoutmaster. So the scoutmaster kind of has that conflict of being the parent and their leader. Uh, so they might defer that to an assistant scoutmaster. So that makes it a lot easier uh, for mentoring and for planning and all that stuff that you do on a regular basis, and I, and I appreciate that. So understanding that you're there to mentor the, the youth leadership towards achieving the goals that they've set, that's a wonderful thing, and you do that hard work, and I appreciate it. I really do. Because without you, we'd be really stuck. So we need leaders like you doing what you do. And I appreciate it very much. And I look forward to seeing you on the trail.